Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that according to my YouTube analytics, 75% of you are between the ages of 18 and 35? No, of course you didn't know that because if you had access to my YouTube dashboard, it would be weird. That means that most of you got into chess or got back into chess at that age. Maybe you played it when you were very young. But did you know there are kids out there who are three years old and they are really good at chess Three! I learned how to move the pieces when I was nearly six. And in today's video, I'm going to be telling you the story of Mikhail Osipov, a Russian three-year-old chess prodigy who first came to fame like in an explosion because he was on a Russian TV show where they spotlight these types of talents. And in today's video, I'm going to show you clips from the TV show. I'm going to show you the game that he played against world champion Anatoly Karpov. And at the end, we will also look at this little three-year-old dude solving ridiculously hard chess puzzles. And then you can show this to your kids and go, you see how much time you spend on the iPad? You could be Mikhail Osipov. And by the way, there's a second part to all of this, uh, which is uh, the fact that he came back to the show a little while later when he was four years old. So I was going to show you the clip, but as it happens, even though it's in Russian, it's fully copyrighted. So instead of showing you the clip, I'm just going to hope that I can click through the clip without actually playing it and setting off copyrights. Uh, this is a show called Lutsche Vsiach. This is Mikhail Osipov. He is a tiny, tiny human. He is three years old. And on this show, they clearly invite guests who are extremely talented at their field of work. And he is so small, he can barely get down a flight of stairs. The, the show host offers to give him a hand coming down the steps. By the way, if you guys want to watch this video, it's great. It's got English subtitles uh, in case you can't understand. And um, they sit down and they start having a chat. And he, he is, I mean, he's tiny. His feet, it, it, two, two sets of his legs could not touch the floor. And they talk and, and he asks him, you know, do you know how the knight moves? Which is ironic because Andrea Botas asked that to Magnus Carlsen at the World Chess Championship last time. Um, and then, you know, they, they talk a little bit. And he says he's three years old and he likes to play chess. And uh, he asks him a few questions and, and then they bring out a chess set. Uh, he's, uh, I, that's not his mom, but his mom is in the audience. And they sit down and they're going to play a game with this kind of analog style clock. Uh, but here the show host admits that he doesn't know how to play chess. And they have a surprise guest. And this is like a very famous meme. Uh, it's called Chess Final Boss. And basically, uh, the show host invites the 12th world champion, Anatoly Karpov. You know, sportsman of Russia winning some medal, you know, the Medal of Honor. Like, you know, some, some countries, they have like this sports medal um, and, and uh, they bring out Anatoly Karpov. And then this kid's like, what the... F <laughs> he either was not told or he forgot. And he's looking around. This is like an extremely hilarious meme. And, you know, Anatoly Karpov does a little walk out in the tunnel. This is a... I, I can't play it because they'll copyright it. Hopefully they don't copyright the still images. Uh, and then, you know, here... Uh, Misha says, we studied your, your chess textbook against uh, Viktor Korchnoi. Uh, and and uh, he can barely speak. I mean, he can barely say any words. It's, it's adorable. I mean, it's, it, it's completely hilarious. It's, it's so cute. And Karpov, like, asks him a few questions. And um, Misha takes the white pieces. And uh, they sit down and they play uh, 10 minutes for Misha and 2 minutes for Karpov. So, 10 to 2. Not very fair, but, you know, one of them is 3, and the other one's a world, former world champion. And uh, you, you become a world champion for life. It's kind of like being president, you know. They call you President uh, X. Well, uh, you know, world champion Anatoly Karpov. Uh, and uh, now I'm going to show you the game, and then I'm going to uh, show you a little bit of the epilogue, all right? It, it, was, it was incredible. I mean, here's like a still image of them just actively playing, you know. It's just unbelievable stuff. Anyway, I would have shown you the clip, but they copyrighted it. So instead, I will show you this. Uh, enjoy the game, and I will show you the exceptional puzzle-solving skills a little bit later. Uh, this video is a few years old, obviously. Uh, it was filmed in like uh, 20... I don't remember. I don't, I, I don't know. My perception of time completely got warped after COVID. I, I don't know how long ago it was or, or, or what year, but um, he's not the only one. And so what I want to do on this channel is I want to spotlight uh, in individual talents like this. So Osipov started the game with the Queen's Pawn. Like... Okay, knight f6 from Karpov, c4, e6. This slow man is just straight up playing real openings. Like he's playing the main line queen's pawn. He's not even playing a London. He's not even playing like a neutered chess opening like the London. Just kidding, London is great. But he is playing principled chess openings. Now, Anatoly starts with knight f6, e6. Rather than putting a pawn in the center, it's actually considered very mildly inaccurate to play this move order of the queen's gambit declined. 
Uh, if knight c3 happens, the reason black played like this is to fight back against the move e4 with the move bishop before pinning the knight uh, to the king. If you know your chess openings, you know this is called the Nimso Indian. If you don't know your chess openings, now you know this is called the Nimso Indian defense. And it's one of the most classical openings in chess. It was something that Karpov played his entire career in the mid 20th century and late 20th century. And here there are a multitude of different lines. There's kind of like the ignore line, which is e3 and finish your development like this or knight f3. Uh, there's other lines though. Uh, one of the lines, now I, I, I don't necessarily think M Mikhail Osipov knows that he's playing mainline theory. I think he just saw a bishop and decided to attack it. But it just like, you know, it so happens in chess, sometimes you play a random move in the opening and it turns out to be a line. This is called the sameish variation. And basically white just says, I don't like your bishop there, take my knight. And black says, no problem, I'm gonna take your knight. Now, why would black give away a bishop so early? Well, black is blocking white's natural development and damaging uh, the structure. So it's gonna be a little hard to get this bishop out, obviously on that side. And you're most, most likely gonna have to play e3, so this bishop will get stuck. If you play bishop f4, black will try to very quickly put some pressure on those doubled pawns. So it's, uh, it's good and bad, all right? Both sides have some problems in the position. And Karpov plays uh, c5, which is uh, one of the main lines. Now, white here has an approach to very solidly build up the center, or this is actually a line that I like to play very much. It's, uh, f3 is kind of like the main line same-ish, and the idea is to play e4 just very, very quickly. Um, and in a perfect situation, uh, white gets something that looks kind of like this. And this is really nice. White can then play bishop, knight, castle, and white enjoys a massive advantage of space, but as you can see, according to the eval bar, it's still equal because... Such as chess. Um, now, c5 proved to be a little bit too enticing uh, for the young man, uh, and he took the pawn. Now, taking on c5, believe it or not, I mean, as cruel as chess is, is already a borderline losing mistake. Not at his level, and not at your level, necessarily, but at Anatoly Karpov's level, this is a fatal error. It's crazy that taking a free pawn and being up one pawn on move six at the highest level of the game is fatal. Why is this fatal? You shouldn't have tripled pawns. You especially should not have tripled isolated pawns. No D neighbors, no B neighbors. Everybody needs some D. And so tripled pawns, uh, completely, completely weak for the remainder of the game. Black will play knight a6, knight c5. Black will play queen a5, black will play knight e4. Black is gonna get one of the pawns back and then white is still left with all the difficulties of having the bad structure. But Mikhail Osipov is three years old. He just saw a free pawn and he took it. Can you blame him? All right. So, knight a6, and in this position, uh, Misha realized, well, I'm not going to be, I, I probably shouldn't hang on to my pawn, even though moves like queen d4, moves like bishop e3 are all enticing. Um, it could do more harm than good, because as you can see, the eval drops even more if you try to defend your pawn, right? So instead, he plays bishop g5. Now, bishop g5 is, it's not the most accurate move, but he's developing a bishop, all right? He's not trying to be greedy. He's developing a bishop. He's pinning the knight to the queen, uh, and life is good. Now here, Karpov just kind of playing the principled move, which is taking the pawn back. And now Karpov will be castling. And he will probably put his knight on e4. And like I said, black has regained the pawn and he still has the benefits of the position. What well, does black not have? Certain dark square assets, right? This bishop could try to get in. Osipov develops his knight. I mean, he's just developing his pieces like normal. Okay, he's slightly worse. He's playing Anatoly Karpov. Arguably one of the greatest positional chess players to ever live. B6, Karpov delaying castling in order to finish his development and play in typical Nimso style. In the Nimso Indian, all the way back to this move c5, black wants to apply pressure to these pawns by virtue of knight a5 as well as bishop a6. And in this game, we're not gonna get knight a5, we have knight on c5, but Karpov wants to apply some c-file pressure uh, to those pawns. And you kind of see white got the bishop pair early, but because white captured on c5, white has certain drawbacks, right? So we have b6, um, and now we have g3. I mean, he's he's going here. Now, Karpov, a machine, all right? You understand Karpov was developing his queen side, was gonna go b6, bishop a6, but the second that little Osipov played g3, trying to develop his bishop to g2, Anatoly did not play bishop a6, trying to win this pawn. Anatoly played h6. Why did he play h6 now? Because if he had played h6 in this position, the bishop would have gone here, and g5, the bishop can just escape, and there's nothing. The second the youngster played this to finish up his development, now Anatoly went here, because now you ain't got this, you ain't, you ain't pinning nothing, because I'm trapping your bishop. One subtle pawn move, 
And world champion plays h6. Now, Misha's young. He sees his bishop is hanging. He probably saw bishop h4, g5. So he said, I'm going to take. But now, remember, white's entire advantage of this position. The only thing that white could cling on to was the bishop pair. He no longer has it. However, the position is still materially equal. For a kid this age, this is ridiculous. Uh, now he just plays knight d4. Why did he play knight d4, not bishop g2? He saw this was hanging. And that's really tough to protect. You could play rook c1, but then your rook is kind of passive. Queen d2, there's a fork. He, he probably thought knight d4, I'm going to go here and I'm going to attack his rook. Unfortunately, Mr. Karpov was a little bit faster here, but Misha played the best move. F3, not afraid of weakening his position. He's going to go here, here, and castle. Karpov castles. Osipov plays bishop to g2, finishing up his development. And now that Anatoly has sort of finished the opening stage, it's time to start taking over the position, utilizing the advantages that he got from the opening stage. And he plays bishop a6, right? So this pawn's going to be very tough to defend. If you play knight b5, you stop the attack on this, but I got news for you. Unfortunately, you exacerbate matters, and now it's going to get real bad. And uh, here Osipov plays one of the best. He plays f4. He plays pawn to f4, counterattacking the rook. He's three, damn it. Do you, you know how few of you would see f4? Like, I don't know, 200,000 of you? This dude is three years old. It was a matter of weeks ago. He might have not been able to use the potty on his own. He might still not. I don't know when kids are get potty trained. I don't have one. I have a dog. He's, he's barely potty trained, all right? He's potty trained. I don't know why I'm throwing him under the bus. He's great. He's wonderful. He was awful the first six months, but now he's wonderful. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Benji. You're great. Can you get me a pet food sponsorship? Yo, pet food companies. Hit me up. Um, don't spend money on those Super Bowl ads. They're like 30000000 million. I'll do it for half. Rook c8. Castles. Bishop c4. Now here, there is a funny moment. Folks, remember how I told you that... It was 10 minutes versus two. Well, here it's about a minute each. Misha was playing a little slowly because he's three. So Karpov here says, well, you know, you and I are even on time. So, and even in the position, do you want to draw? And Osipov looks at him and goes, Nyet. not understanding that he's probably going to lose on time. And well, unfortunately, he strikes at the world champ. The world champ doesn't, doesn't allow any activity here, doesn't allow any of this stuff. He closes down the position, and in just a couple of moves, he secures a clamp on the center. Everything is defended, pressure on the position. And here, uh, unfortunately, Misha Osipov lost on time. Now, it was, uh, it was in a, a, it was, uh, it was sad. It was definitely a little bit sad to see. Um, he was very teary-eyed. <laughs> he cried a little bit. He was very overwhelmed by the moment. And by the way, that's a separate discussion, bringing a three-year-old on a television program. But he was very overwhelmed, but he was, and he, and he ran to his mom. His mom comforted him. But then, I mean, Anatoly was so, so compliment. He was saying, I've never played somebody this young. His understanding is that of a mature sportsman. It was beautiful, incredible. I highly encourage you to watch it, especially because it's subtitled. Then they brought him back. They gave him a medal. And, uh, and, and, and it was, it, it was amazing. It was, uh, well, I'll show you. So after they played, uh, Misha was a bit upset. He was a bit overwhelmed by the moment, uh, with, you know, the crowd and everything. And, and he got a bit teary eyed and he ran to his mom. It was a very, very sweet moment and reminding us that he is literally three years old, which is just so mind blowing. Um, and then what they did is they awarded him a medal and they invited him to solve puzzles on the monitor. So it's tiny Misha and it's only Karpov and the show host. And Misha is just solving tactics on a big screen. He's solving tactics. I mean, look at this. This is, this is crazy. He's solving checkmates in three, which I will show you. I will show, I'm going to show them to you separately. Um, and at some point, the host, you know, he solves another one. And, you know, Misha, I have no words. And at some point, the host asks Anatoly, is this impressive for a three-year-old? And Anatoly's like, unbelievably impressive. Like, so impressive. Um, he is solving some absurd chess studies, like like impossible positions that can arise when they are you know made. Like somebody creates the position because the solution is so beautiful and sophisticated, and this three year old boy uh, is solving them. I, I mean, it's it's just unbelievable stuff. So so I just wanted to show you this. I would have showed you the clip, but I can't, or else they'll you know not allow me to monetize the video or even upload it. So enjoy the footage uh, of of uh, of him solving these positions. This little man solved this position. It's made in three. 
I mean, you 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 try to solve it. You pause here if you want. Pause the video. Try to solve this checkmate in three. This three-year-old solved checkmate in three. It, th th three. He said knight h6 because queen g7's knight knight takes. Here, that's not mate. You hunt the king out, and now the king is cut off geometrically. Knight f5 prevents. But how? Okay, he's good, but can he solve a study? This is a study. This is not a real practical position. It's white to move, do something super creative, and win the game. Knight g5, okay? Rook g5. This dude said this answer before it even appeared on the screen. Rook f6! Rook d6 mate. A king and rook mate in reverse in, this, in the middle of a... I mean, come on, this is ridiculous. And so the producer asks Karpov, he's like, is it actually like quite difficult to solve this when you're three? It's quite difficult to solve this if you're 45! And the last one, I mean, was absurd. So it's white to move, checkmate in three. You actually try to solve this. White to move, checkmate in three. First of all, this position's not legal. Because there's no way it can be white to move. Unless... Uh... The king was just on that square or something. Because that, 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 that's, you know, and, and, and white gave a check and black didn't take the knight. Uh, th this is so sick, this one. And he solved it. Bishop f6, and now the pawn has to take the bishop. The pawn didn't have a legal move. Now there's this, king f8, it's stalemate, but the pawn moves. Get at it. I mean, this is just... Now, now it, I, th because this was a few years ago, so Misha Osipov is like... I don't know, 9 or 10 now. Hopefully he's still playing. What sometimes happens is when a kid, when anybody has so much hype behind them, they very, very, they, they, don't, they don't live up to it sometimes. You know, LeBron James is probably the greatest example of somebody who has avoided trouble and lived up to the hype, right? Like, in, in terms of, it's what a lot of people say. I can't, I can't speak about football. I don't know about, you know, football prospects. Um, but uh, it's just incredible. So... I really hope uh, he, um, you know, turns into quite a good player and these kind of like early media runs don't totally uh, take away from his confidence or, uh, you know, make him starstruck. And I've known kids like I used to teach at schools. If, if anybody's still here watching, I used to teach uh, before I was a YouTuber. I, I taught at, at schools. I ran my own chess program. And um, the, 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 the scariest thing for me was rushing a young kid into big things. Like I, I taught a few four and five year olds that were exceptional students. They were Great, they love chess, natural curiosity. It was amazing watching their brain connect neurons and fire them and learn new things. But the second they went to competition, that was it. They couldn't handle it. The stress, the pressure, all this stuff. So uh, I wish him all the best. And, and I, I want to cover you know some more young prodigies on this channel because learning chess and being this good at it at three is uh, is is, is a f unbelievable feat of the human mind. Uh, really, I, I mean, exceptional stuff. Um, I'm glad I could share Mikhail Osipov with all of you, and um, I wish you all have a great rest of your day or evening. Get out of here.